Hello students, continuing with our topic of microeconomics, the next chapter that we will now be discussing will be nature, scope and importance of economics. We will now go ahead to discuss the nature of economics, the scope of economics and the reason why we need to study economics. When discussing the nature and scope of economics, there may be certain questions that we may like to consider. First of all, we would like to understand what is the subject matter of economics and whether economics is a science or an art, whether it is a positive science or a normative science, whether it is a social science, whether it can solve practical problems and it will study welfare economics. Let us now discuss the nature and scope of economics in detail under the above mentioned heads. The modern economists have divided the subject matter of economics into two major branches, microeconomics and macroeconomics. Economic problems can be analyzed or studied in two ways that is at an individual level and at an aggregate level. The method of studying at an individual level is known as microeconomics and that of studying at an aggregate level or collective level is known as macroeconomics. In 1933 for the first time Professor Ragnar Fritz used the terms micro and macro. Since then, the use of these terms has increased considerably. An economic system may be looked at as a whole or in terms of its innumerable decision-making units, producing units, individual factors of production and individual industries. When we analyze the behavior of any particular decision-making unit such as a firm, an industry, a consumer, it constitutes microeconomics, while an analysis of the problems of the economy as a whole is macroeconomic study. Microeconomics is also called price theory and macroeconomics is called income theory. The former explains the composition or allocation of total production, why some things are produced more than others and the latter explains the level of total production and why the level rises and falls. We shall explain these two branches in detail in the next chapter. Now let us understand is economics a science or an art? Whether a particular branch of learning is to be regarded as science or not depends on what we considered a science to be. The term science implies that anything which explains the cause and effect relationship between various economic variables. Science is a systemized body of knowledge and not merely a collection of facts. Science also has laws which explain and elucidate the facts. If we expect a science to formulate laws applicable everywhere and to all times, then economics is not a science. In the words of Poincare, science is built up of facts as a house is built up of stones. But all accumulation of facts is no more a science than a heap of stones is a house. But economics possesses certain characteristics of a science. Firstly, it studies the cause and effect relationship of economic variables such as prices, demand, supply, production, national income, employment, etc. Secondly, it is a systematic body of knowledge. And lastly, we can make generalization in economics through logical deduction and this generalization can be supported by confronting them to the observation of the real world. These generalizations, like other scientific laws, state what takes place when certain assumptions are fulfilled. For example, in economics, the law of demand states that a fall in the price of a commodity 
leads to a large quantity being demanded given other things such as income of the consumer price of related goods tastes and preferences of the consumers etc remaining the same thus the law of economics are conditional subject to the condition that other things are being equal they are not precise and final or exact and definite as the laws of physical sciences therefore the method of economics is scientific but it cannot be precise as the physical sciences because the human and social behavior is complex and unpredictable j m keynes has defined art as a system for the attainment of a given end the object of art is to formulate the rules and it teaches us how to do things it is practical as compared to a science which is theoretical economics can be regarded as an art because it gives us basic values with which we can solve various economic problems of the society it helps us in solving the day to day economic problems of life when we say that economics is both a science and an art as a science it is a systematic body of knowledge and it makes generalizations and theories using scientific methods as an art it puts this knowledge into practice and uses the economic rules for formulation of various economic policies samelson has rightly said that economics can be described as the oldest of the arts and the newest of the sciences indeed the queen of social sciences it studies the economic behavior of individuals and organizations in society that is the behavior which is related to the production distribution and consumption of the goods and services if we consider economics as science it can further be classified into being a positive science or a normative science a positive science studies things as they are for example this is the extent of poverty in the in the economy this is the rate of unemployment in the economy so it is studying things as they are and a normative science besides studying the things as they are they also tell us how men how the things should be so for example in the above example which i gave that we study the unemployment problem this is the extent of unemployment so economics also tells us the uh, it gives suggestions on how we can overcome the unemployment problem so a normative science besides studying the things as they are it also tells us how the thing should be if this is the extent of unemployment if we do not take the given measures then the, that is going to be the extent of unemployment in future so a normative science not just tells us the things in the present but it also kind of predicts things for the future if this is going to be the level of poverty in future this is what is seen in the level of poverty since economics considers human behavior thus it is considered a social science and samuelson has rightly stated that economics is the oldest of the arts and the newest of the sciences indeed the queen of social sciences it means that besides studying the other things economics also studies the human behavior thus it is a social science because it studies the human beings 